Hello everyone, thank you very much for listening to this talk. My name is Gordon Brown and I'm going to be giving a brief presentation on some of the work that we've been doing at Codeplay to bring support for NVIDIA GPUs to Sickle. Now this talk is a reduced version of a talk by my colleague Roman Reyes that's going to be in the main iWalkal Sickle contract, so credit to him for much of the materials in this. So Sickle applications can now run on NVIDIA GPUs with a native CUDA backend using DPC++. That's Data Parallel C++, the open source Sickle implementation led by Intel. This means that any Sickle application can now run on NVIDIA GPUs as well as the range of existing devices which could already support Sickle. This is because the CUDA backend is plugged into an existing Sickle runtime, so it uses the same standard Sickle API. So in this talk, I'm going to cover a few topics. First, I'm going to give a high level overview of how we added a CUDA backend to DPC++, which is now available upstream within the DPC++ project. Next, I'm going to cover some of the experience we gained in porting Sickle for a non-OpenCL backend, and take a look at some of the proposals that we have made to the Sickle Working Group for Sickle 2020 as a result. Finally, I'm going to show you how to use NVIDIA support in your Sickle applications. However, a quick disclaimer before I begin. Firstly, NVIDIA, the NVIDIA logo and CUDA are trademarks and are registered trademarks of NVIDIA Corporation in the US and or other countries. And also, Codeplay is not associated with NVIDIA for this work and it is purely using public documentation and widely available code. So first, I'm going to show you how we added a CUDA backend to DPC++. So going back, Sickle was first designed for OpenCL 1.2, and if Sickle 2.2 had been fully ratified, it would have targeted OpenCL 2.2. However, some existing Sickle implementations were already starting to support non-OpenCL backends such as Rockham or OpenMP. So we had an open discussion about what other backends Sickle could be a higher level programming model for. One option for this was Vulkan. Now this is possible, but it's not so straightforward because Sickle was not designed for graphics. There is also a potential path already for Vulkan via CLSPV and CLVK. So what about CUDA? Support for NVIDIA GPUs in Sickle was probably one of the most requested features we got from Sickle applications developers. We had existing experimental support for NVIDIA GPUs via OpenCL and PTX, but this was not ideal. Native CUDA support would be a much better fit for the Sickle ecosystem. DPC++ is an open source Sickle implementation led by Intel. The long term goal is to merge it into upstream Clang and LLVM. DPC++ has various extensions to the standard Sickle 1.2.1 API and also provides a plugin interface referred to as PI, which allows it to support additional backends to the existing OpenCL backend. This is where we added support for NVIDIA GPUs via CUDA. As you can see here in the diagram, all backends use the same DPC++ runtime, which calls down into PI. So we added a new backend here for CUDA, which will take the PI calls and direct them down to the CUDA driver API, which ultimately enqueues work to the NVIDIA GPUs. Now there are a lot of similarities between Sickle and CUDA, so there are many places where this mapping was fairly straightforward. However, there are some places in which this was more complicated. I'm not going to go into the details of this too much, however, if you're interested, please check out my colleague Roman's talk in the main iWalkle Sickle contract called Bringing Performance Support for NVIDIA Hardware to Sickle. Here we can see some preliminary performance results from a local build. For this, we are using Babelstream 3.4, the current tip, and CUDA 10.1 with a GeForce GTX 980. The bands here represent bandwidth, so higher is better. The orange is a DPC++ CUDA backend. The green is plain CUDA, and the light blue is OpenCL stream running on CUDA. As you can see, there's still a slight performance gap compared to the native CUDA, but the difference for everything except for DOT is less than 10%. But note that this is still early work. Now here we see the results of the DPC++ CUDA backend with an internal development branch, which has a different implementation for event handling. This is shown here in yellow. Performance now in all cases, including DOT, is much closer to native CUDA. Now this is still in development, but we hope to see this reach tip along with a number of other performance improvements soon. 
Now I'm going to go over our experiences of porting Sickle to support a CUDA backend. What we learned from this and what we proposed for future versions of the Sickle specification. So as Sickle was originally designed for OpenCL, not everything was going to map to CUDA perfectly. So what worked and what didn't? Firstly, much of Sickle worked very well and was able to be mapped to run on top of CUDA, including the Sickle platform model and memory model. So what didn't work so well? After introducing a new backend, there was no way to differentiate between platforms from different backends. Interoperability also wouldn't work as it required OpenCL types. Sickle 1.2.1 images couldn't be supported as is because CUDA cannot support dynamically sampleable images like OpenCL can. So in CUDA, you have to specify the sampler when you create the image if you want to use one. Finally, the program class was tied too closely to the OpenCL compilation model. From this experience, we proposed a number of new features for Sickle 2020 to try to tweak the API to allow CUDA to be a fully supported backend, but while not deviating from what made Sickle what it is. The first of these was the Sickle generalization. What this means is generalizing Sickle to be able to support non-OpenCL backends. Now the execution, memory, and platform models would remain the same, and the API would be largely unaffected by this. But the platform model would be extended to be capable of supporting multiple backends and not just OpenCL. Next up, there are Sickle modules, not to be confused with C++20 modules. Modules are a replacement for the Sickle 1.2.1 program class. A module represents all the kernel functions in a translation unit. And they can also contain multiple file formats, such as Spear, Spear-V, PTX, or even a vendor-specific instruction set. The interface is now also type-safe and thread-safe. A few other proposals that I'd like to cover quickly. Generalization of interoperability to support different backends rather than just OpenCL. A refactoring of images to replace the current SQL 1.2.1 image class with the two sampled image and unsampled image classes. And finally, the host task, which allows for native C++ functions to be scheduled by the SQL runtime using the existing SQL memory model. Now, unfortunately, I don't have time to go into all of these in more detail. However, if you are interested in presenting a talk in the main IWACL SQL contract called SQL 2020 More Than Meets the Eye, which will cover the generalization modules and host task in a bit more detail. Now lastly, I'm going to show you how to use NVIDIA support in DPC++ for your Sickle applications. So the first thing to do is to download or build a DPC++ package. There are daily builds as well as more stable monthly builds available at the link here. And there are also detailed instructions for getting started. Once you have DPC++ installed, you can compile with the DPC++ compiler as normal but using the CUDA triple NVPTX64-NVIDIA-CUDA-SICL device, as shown here. Then, once it's compiled, you just need to enable the CUDA backend in the SICL runtime by setting the environment variable SICL underscore BE to PI underscore CUDA, as shown in the example here. And that's it, it's as simple as that. One thing to note though, Make sure that your Sickle application is using an appropriate device selector so that it'll choose an NVIDIA device. Also, using both the OpenCL backend and the CUDA backend at the same time is not yet supported. Okay, thank you very much for listening. We should now have some time for questions.